Hello and welcome! Have you ever looked at a triangle like this and asked yourself the question, how many triangles are in this triangle? What I don't want to see is any confused expressions. Don't make your face like this or like this. None of these confused expressions. I will show you a step-by-step -step way of counting these triangles and we'll develop a formula together. First, we'll start from small triangles and count only the triangles going up. This is pretty easy. It's size one and there's only one triangle going up, which we've written up here. Here, this one is size two and the way we count we start by counting the biggest triangle, which is this one right here. So we write one. And then we count the smaller ones, but we count them every row. So we have one plus one plus two for the smaller ones, which gives us one plus one plus two, which is four. On to the next one. This one size three. Can you start to see a pattern? Math is all about finding patterns. For the ones going up, we've got 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3. And on and on. See that pattern right there? And this one here. How many are going up? That gives us enough to develop a formula for the ones going up. All of these numbers can be found on another triangle called Pascal's triangle. The triangles we found going up, if you look at Pascal's triangle, we had 1 and then 4, 10, 20, 35. The next one was going to be 56, 84, 120, and so on. So here is how we'll develop a formula for it. I'll write them all out like this. We have 1, 4, 10, 20, 35, 56. And we could go on. This is a polynomial and we'll find its equation. What we do is we take the difference between each of these terms. So 1 and 4, the difference is 3. From 4 to 10, the difference is 6, 10, 15, 21. And then we take the difference again until we reach something that's constant, that doesn't change. Let's take it here. This is 3, 4, 5, 6. If we wanted to go on here, we'd write 7, 8. And here you can see the difference here. 1, 1, 1. Because this constant occurs in the third level, this is a third degree polynomial. Let's look at a regular third degree polynomial called n cubed and see what that one looks like. I have n cubed right here. It starts with, so here's n cubed. We have 1, 8, 27, 64, 125. Now let's find the difference. 7, 19, 37, 61. And the difference here, this would be 12, 18, 24, 6, 6. And here we've reached the constant. For n cubed, it will always be a difference of 6 at the third level. Remember here we found a difference of 1. 
at the third level, whereas here it was a difference of six. So what that means we have to do is we have to take our triangles going up and multiply them by six. That way, at the third level deep, they will cancel each other out. So I will call this six up. And this equals six, 24, 60, 120, 210. And we don't have to worry about these next terms. There is a pattern, it continues, we can be sure of that. So what we'll do now is we'll take our six ups and we'll subtract n cubed from it. And you'll remember what n cubed is. n cubed, that means this one will subtract one from it. That gives us five. This one, we subtract eight. That gives us 16. Here we subtract 27. It gives us 33. Here we subtract 64. That gives us 56. Now we take the differences here. As you can see, 11, 17, 23, 6, 6. See here, the constant appears in the second layer deep. That means it's a second degree polynomial that we need to figure out our equation for the ups. Now let's look at a regular second degree polynomial. This one looks like this. We have n squared equals 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. And let's take the differences between these. 3, 5, 7, 9. And the difference here? 2, 2, 2. Remember the difference here at the second level was 6. Here it's 2. That means what we have to do is we have to multiply n squared by 3 and we'll subtract it from these ones. So I'll go like this and write 6 ups minus n cubed minus 3n squared. So we have to take our 3n squared and subtract it from 5. So 5 minus 3 equals 2. 16 minus 12 equals 4. 33 minus 27 equals 6. 56 minus 48, 8, and so on. Now this is a, an easy pattern to spot. 2, 4, 6, 8. That means that if we subtract 2n from both sides, we should get 0, 0, 0, 0 on the right. So here's what we'll do. 6 ups minus n cubed minus 3n squared minus 2n equals. So now we'll take our 2n and subtract it from here. 2n would be 2, 4, 6, 8, so we'll subtract it from the right. And that gives us 0, 0, 0, 0. Indefinitely, it will be zero. That means what we have here, six ups equals n cubed plus three n squared plus two n. And what we can do, divide both sides by six. That means that our ups equals n cubed plus 3n squared 
plus 2n divided by 6. We have now figured out how many triangles there are going upwards. Now for the next part, we'll figure out how many triangles there are going downwards, which is a little bit more complicated. Okay, so now for the triangles going down. For size one, we have zero triangles going down. For size two, we have one triangle going down. For size three, going down, we have one plus two, which is three. For size four, going down, you see we have our one right here, this big one. And then for the little ones, we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 7. Size 5, do you see going down, we have 1 plus 2, and those are the bigger ones. And for the small ones, we have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. See if you can find a pattern already. See that? 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3, plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, going down. See that big one right there? And then these ones would be that second row, and then these small ones would be the third row. So what you can see is that the evens fit into one group, and the odds fit into one group. So see here with the odds, the ones going down from 5 to 7, do you see that pattern right there? What do you think it will be for the next odd one, which would be size 9? We simply just add one more layer to that bottom, see it? This is how we will figure out our formula. Our first odd one had zero going down. So we'll write odds going down. So we'll start with zero. Our next odd one would be size three, which is here. And see, going down, we have one plus two equals three. Zero, three. And where's my 5? Right here. Going down, we have, we have 1 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 13 going down. Continuing that pattern, we'll get 34 and then we'll get 70. And this gives us enough to find some consistency. Let's take the difference. 3, 10, 21, 36. So continuing on with our differences, 7, 11, 15, 4, 4. So what do we know? This is a third degree polynomial. And he here, at this third layer deep, we have a difference of 4. Now remembering that for our third degree polynomial, we had a difference of, of 6 at that level. And here we have 4. What we want to do we want to find a common multiple. And I know that the least common multiple between 6 and 4 would be 12. But if we use 12 as a common multiple, we'll, we'll run into problems with the next step. So we'll simply use 24 as a common multiple. It's not the least, but it's the easiest one. So here's what we'll do. is We'll take our n cubed and we'll multiply it by 4. 
And we'll take these odds going down and we'll multiply it by six. And then at this third level deep, they will cancel each other out. So here I'll multiply these ones by six. So I'll call it six odds going down So these six odds going down is now equal to 0, 18, 78, 204, 420. And if you take the difference going all the way down, on the third level down, you'll find 24, which will match our 4n cubed at the third level down, which will also be 24. Okay, here we go. 4n cubed minus 6 odds. So we have our 4n cubed. 4 minus 0, that is 4. 32 minus 18, 14. 108 minus 78 gives us 30. 256 minus 204, that gives us 52. And 500 minus 420 gives us 80. So here's a question, 5280, where does that number appear? It appears somewhere that has nothing to do with triangles. Put it in the comments below. Where does 5280 appear in real life? Now we're going to take the difference between these numbers. 10, 16, 22, 28. And here, 6, 6, 6. We have found the constant. It's in the second level down. That means we now need to take a second degree polynomial. Now you'll recall with our second degree polynomial looked like this 1 4 9 16 25 and here at that layer we had 2 2 2 whereas here we have 6 6 6 so that means we have to subtract 3n squared. So here you go 4n cubed minus 6 odds going down minus 3n squared. Now we have to subtract 3n squared from the right hand side. And here's what 3n squared is. See it right there along the bottom. This is going to be 4 minus 3, 1, 14 minus 12, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the difference here, 1, 1, 1, 1. These ones have a difference of 1. So now we just have to subtract n from both sides. So we have 4n cubed minus 6 odds going down minus 3n squared minus n equals, if we subtract n, means minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, 0, 0, 0, all the way. That means that for our odds going down, what we have is we have 6 odds going down, and that's equal to 4n cubed minus 3n squared minus n. Now we divide by 6, and we'll get odds going down equals 4n cubed minus 3n squared minus n divided by 6. This is for our odd triangles going down. Now we need to find a formula for our even triangles going down.
Okay, let's take a look at our even triangles going down. Our first even one would be size 2. And going down, there's simply just one. Our next even one is size 4. Going down, there are 7. Here's size 6. There are 22 going down. Size 8. There are 50 triangles going down. And size 10. Going down, there are 95. Okay, so we'll take the difference here. 6, 15, 28, 45, and again, we have 9, 13, 17, 4, 4. So just like last time, what we'll do is we'll multiply these even ones by 6, and we'll multiply our n cubed by 4. So we have our 6 evens going down. This is equal to 6, 42, 132, 300, 570. We'll subtract our 4 n cubed from our 6 evens. So that gives us 6 minus 4 is 2. 42 minus 32 is 10. Then we get 24, 44, and 70. So now let's take and look at the differences. We've got 8, 14, 20, 26. And the difference again, 6, 6, 6. Just like we did with the odds, when in the second layer down we have a difference of 6, that means we have to subtract 3n squared. So we'll get our 6 even going down, minus 4n cubed, minus 3n squared. This minus 3n squared, so 2 minus 3, that gives us negative 1. 10 minus 12, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Going down, we get We have negative 1, negative 1 all the way. So that means that once we have this, we just need to add n to both sides, and that will cancel these out. So we'll have 6 evens going down minus 4n cubed minus 3n squared plus n equals, well, what's this plus n? You get plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 5, equals 0, 0, 0, all the way. So we'll keep the even on this side, and we'll push everything else to the other side. We'll get 6 evens going down equals 4n cubed plus 3n squared minus n. Now let's divide both sides by 6. Put this over 6. Get rid of that. And our evens going down is this right here. 4n cubed plus 3n squared minus n divided by 6. 
What we just did, we separated the triangles going down between even and odd. And what we did was we came up with two formulas which differed based on if it was even or odd. But now we'll see if there's one formula we can use for the triangles going down. So the formula we came up with for the odd triangles going down, what we would do is we would plug in the first odd one and then the second odd one. So for example, this one's size 5, we would plug in the number 3 right here. But what we want is we want a formula where we can plug in the number 5 straight into it. So, for example, we were given one, and we wanted one. We were given three, but we wanted two, because three is the second odd number. We were given five, but we wanted three. We were given seven, we wanted four. How do we go from what we're given to what we want? We replace n with n plus 1 over 2. We'll take this n plus 1 over 2 and we'll stick it in right here. So we'll get 4 n plus 1 over 2 cubed minus 3 n plus 1 over 2 squared minus n plus 1 over 2. And this is divided by 6. So this becomes 4 over 8 times 6. 8 from 2 cubed, 6 from there, times n plus 1 cubed minus 3 over 4, which is 2 squared, times this 6, times n plus 1 squared, minus n plus 1 divided by 12. Now a step further, this becomes 1 over 12, n plus 1 cubed, minus 1 over 8, n plus 1 squared minus n over 12 minus 1 over 12. Going down one more line, 1 over 12, this is where we'll use the binomial expansion theorem. This becomes n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1 and minus 1 over 8, n squared plus 2n plus 1, minus n over 12, minus 1 over 12. So now distributing this, we'll get n cubed over 12 plus 3 divided by 12, that's n squared over 4, plus 3 divided by 12 again, n over 4, plus 1 over 12, minus n squared over 8, minus n over 4, minus 1 over 8, minus minus n over 12, minus 1 over 12. Now this becomes n cubed over 12, plus, we have n squared over 4 minus n squared over 8, that is n squared over 8. Now for the n's, n over 4 minus n over 4, well, that's 0. Then we have minus n over 12. Minus n over 12. And then here we have 1 over 12 minus 1 over 12. That's 0. And we have this minus 1 eighth. 
So this is our formula. If n is odd, the number of triangles is odd, such as this one, we can plug in the number 5 right here, and it'll spit out the number 13, just what we are looking for. Now we have to do the same with the evens, but for the even ones, it's even easier. For the evens, we already figured it out. 4n cubed plus 3n squared minus n over 6. Now what we were given, we're given numbers such as 2, 4, 6, 8. And what we want is we want the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 to be plugged into here. So for example, this one, n equals 6. We want, we want to, a formula where we can plug in 6 to it, and it'll tell us that there are 22 triangles going down. So if we plug in 6, we need to turn that 6 into a 3, so that we can put the 3 into here. So how do we get from what we're given to what we want? We replace n with n over 2. This becomes 4n over 2 cubed plus 3n over 2 squared minus n over 2 divided by 6. This becomes 4n cubed over 8 times 6 plus 3 n squared over 4 times 6 minus n over 2 times 6. This becomes a 2, so we're given n cubed over 12 plus n squared over 8 minus n over 12. This is what we use if n is even. So try that. Plug in 6 to this formula right here, and it will tell you that going down there's 22 triangles. Now let's compare our even formula to our odd formula. What was our odd formula? If you remember, our odd formula was n cubed over 12 plus n squared over 8 minus n over 12 minus 1 over 8. This was if n is odd. Now take a look at these two formulas. n cubed over 12 is the same here and here. Plus n squared over 8 minus n over 12. The only difference between these two formulas is if n is odd, we have to subtract 1 over 8. Let's try to combine these formulas with our formula for triangles going up. So I'll erase this one here. And I'll write it like this. I'll write minus 1 over 8 if n is odd. And if n is even, then we don't have to subtract our 1 over 8. So you'll recall the triangles going up was n cubed plus 3n squared plus 2n divided by 6. 
Now let's add this to it. So we'll go plus n cubed over 12 plus n squared over 8 minus n over 12 and then we'll say minus 1 over 8 if n is odd. So let's try to combine this all into one formula. We need to look for the least common denominator between 6, 12, and 8. Here, our least common denominator ends up being 24. So let's multiply the top and bottom here by 4. That gives us 4n cubed plus 12n squared plus 8n plus, here we multiply the top and bottom by 2, 2n cubed plus, here we multiply by 3, 3 n squared minus 2 n and this is all over 24. And let's not forget this one. We have to subtract minus 3 over 24 to keep it the same denominator if n is odd. Let's combine these, 4n cubed plus 2n cubed, that would be 6n cubed, 12n squared plus 3n squared, that would be plus 15n squared, plus 8n minus 2n plus 6n minus 3 over 24 if n is odd. And this becomes over 24 as well. Now we can see that there's some cancelling we can do. We can divide the top and the bottom by 3. This becomes 2n cubed plus 5n squared plus 2n divided by 8. And then we can say minus 1 over 8 if n is odd. Now can we go even a step further? We can by factoring. First we can bring out the n. So we'll go n times 2n squared plus 5n plus 2 divided by 8. Always remembering this minus 1 over 8 if n is odd. And this can be factored as well. This becomes n over 8 times 2n plus 1 times n plus 2. So I'll just rewrite it up here nice and big. So it becomes n times 2n plus 1 times n plus 2 all over 8 minus 1 over 8 if n is odd. And another thing you can think of is if n is odd, we'll get this extra 8 in there. And so we can simply just round it down, no matter what. If n is even, it'll be an integer. If n is odd, it'll be 1 eighth greater than an integer. So by rounding down, regardless of what you have, you'll get the right number. So the way 
that we do rounding down is we do this symbol. So n, 2n plus 1, n plus 2, divided by 8, rounded down. So now back to the original question. How many triangles are here? Simply plug in 20. That makes it 20 times 41 times 22 divided by 8. And because 20 is even, you don't have to round. It'll already be a good integer. Now how about this one? If the size of the triangle is n, as in this case, we just have to plug in this. You don't have to count forever. You don't have to make weird, confused expressions with your face. We have solved the problem. This formula will count all your triangles in triangles for you. We've done it. 